In the 1400s, Florence was a powerhouse in the Italian Renaissance led by the rich and powerful Medici family who sponsored great artists and minds such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Sandro Botticelli. The paintings these artists created were extravagant and purposely made to look grand, going with the new Renaissance philosophy that man could actually live luxuriously without offending God. Throughout his lifetime, Lorenzo himself paid for hundreds of paintings to be begun and was the patron of great painters. He brought the Renaissance to its peak, but in a couple decisions may have also started the Renaissance on the path to its fall. During his final years, Lorenzo made two decisions that would help lead to the downfall of the Italian Renaissance. He decided Piero II would be his heir, and he asked a young friar named Girolamo Savonarola to come to Florence. Girolamo Savonarola was born in 1452 in Ferrara, Italy. Throughout his early life, Girolamo showed no intentions of becoming a friar. Instead, he decided to follow in the footsteps of his grandfather, who was in the medical field. However, at some point in his life, he became disgusted at the way people lived their lives and decided to join a monastery and become a friar. He pursued theology studies at the monastery for several years until he got into an argument with one of the head friars. Frustrated again at the way people acted, Savonarola left the order and was hired to be a mentor at a San Marco monastery in Florence by Lorenzo de' Medici in 1482. At the monastery, Girolamo taught logic, but mainly wrote books on various topics. His preaching wasn't very successful yet because it was limited by his In 1486, accent. he moved to another monastery where he claimed to receive a message from God consisting of seven reasons why the church had to be reformed. After receiving the messages, Savonarola wandered around Italy for four years, preaching sermons why the church was becoming impure and how people should repent. At one sermon, a Florentine nobleman attended and was impressed by Girolamo's message and devotion. When arriving back in Florence, he convinced Lorenzo de' Medici to let Girolamo stay in Florence again. Quickly, the Medicis grew suspicious of Savonarola's activity because his view and Lorenzo's view were so opposite. Lorenzo spent money on grand pieces of art, while Savonarola believed that the art was impure and must be removed. However, these differences were put aside as Girolamo became a powerful speaker. So many people showed up at his sermons of repentance that he had to move from a small garden to the cathedral to preach. He soon gained so much power from his sermons that Lorenzo had to send messengers to try and tell Savonarola to show more respect towards the Medicis. However, Savonarola refused and instead predicted Lorenzo's coming death. During the same period, Sandro Botticelli became a follower of Girolamo. With Lorenzo's death in 1492, the stage was set for Savonarola to take power. In Lorenzo's place was an incompetent heir, Piero II. Girolamo was now the most powerful person in Florence. All he had to do now was find a way to take power officially. Charles VIII of France's invasion of Italy was the perfect op opportunity to take charge. Girolamo went to Charles and asked him to spare Florence. The people were now under his control. With more power, Girolamo's sermons became more fiery and passionate. He reformed Florence from being a city of pleasure to having a strict dress code. People were so intimidated by his apocalyptic messages that they wouldn't dare do anything deemed impure. Florentine artists were scared to put out any new paintings because of fear that they would get persecuted or that their hard work would, would be destroyed. In 1496, Savonarola declared that there should be a religious festival where the rich gave their treasures to the poor. Many people joined the effort and the carnival was a success. With the success of the first carnival, Savonarola arranged another. This time, the main event would be the infamous Bonfire of the Vanity. At the bonfire, Girolamo told his followers to get paintings, brushes, anything impure that could possibly lead people astray and told them to throw the items into the bonfire. The traveling merchant offered to pay 20,000 gold coins for the treasures to be spared, but Savonarola rejected his offer and even ordered the merchant's portrait to be burned. When the news reached Pope Alexander VI, he decided something had to be done. At first, he tried to bribe Savonarola. When his attempts to get Savonarola to stop failed, he ordered that Savonarola was excommunicated and only declared innocent if he could survive a trial by fire. Then Savonarola was arrested, forced to denounce his beliefs, and the trial by fire began. Girolamo Savonarola died on May 23, 1498.
Moving the Medici's from power, even from a little bit, affects the Renaissance in a big way. Since the Medici's were the main people who bought art produced by the Florentine artists, even a slight absence led to many paintings not being produced or many works left to be forgotten. Because Florence was the center of the Renaissance, removing the people from the culture probably had a large impact on the Renaissance. Girolamo had a big impact on painters, especially a very famous one, Botticelli. Botticelli's fascination with Savonarola is well documented and there are even reports that he burned his own paintings in the bonfire. If Savonarola affected someone who painted something as well known as the birth of Venus, it is very likely that he may have also influenced minor artists as well. It should also be mentioned that the Medici's never fully regained their power and instead had to continue their reign through two Medici popes, Leo X and Clement, and their power from the church was soon diminished by another religious reformer named Martin Luther. In conclusion, the reign of Savonarola was probably one of the big factors in the decline of the Renaissance.